chapter 6 is actually the last chapter we'll be doing this semester. Chapter 7 is mostly not chemistry. The chemistry portions we'll be covering in lab this week. So when you guys take general chemistry 2, we'll come right in on chapter 8 to start there. How many of you need to take general chemistry 2? Okay. So you guys already know that you have two choices. You can either take general chemistry 2 summer B or next spring. Those are the two times it's offered. So especially if you need to take organic chemistry in the fall, you should take general chemistry 2 summer B. You don't have it in the fall? Exactly. So if you need to take it, it's either this summer or next spring. And especially if you need to take organic, organic one is only offered in the fall, so you'll have to take it summer bait. That doesn't apply to this college, right? Yes. Right. If you're taking it in another college, it's shame on you. No, he's like that. You have to take it here. It doesn't count otherwise. Okay. That's not awesome. So anyway, on to chapter 6, our last chapter of the semester. Chapter 6 deals with something that so far we have not talked about. Consider this reaction right here. Anything wrong with this reaction? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. I hope it does make sense. <laughs> It's not balanced, of course. So, how do we balance this thing here? How about this? That work? Sure. Absolutely does, but it's not legal. So we then go through and double everything. And now we have a legally balanced chemical equation. There is still, though, something missing here, something wrong. That is this. Turns out when hydrogen and oxygen combine chemically to make water, it's not quite as peaceful as this particular equation seems to imply. You guys seen pictures of the Hindenburg? Giant blimp crashing into things, exploding in flames. That was this exact reaction right here, hydrogen and oxygen combining. So they don't combine to gently make water, they make other things as well. So picture the Hindenburg there. Picture being on board the Hindenburg. It's kind of crazy back then. Uh, blimps were the big thing, Zeppelins. They used to cross the Atlantic all the time. A giant balloon filled with hydrogen. And of course, on board this giant balloon filled with hydrogen, everybody was smoking. Can you guys imagine that? I would not smoke next to a big bag of hydrogen like that. But they did. Now, think about that. So the Hindenburg crashes. Hydrogen in the balloon is combining with oxygen in the atmosphere. Water is being made, but what else? What have you seen in those pictures? Fire. Fire. Lots and lots of fire. Do they know hydrogen is flammable? Yeah. <laughs> they didn't care, though. They didn't. All right. Where was I here? Fire. Fire. Now, fire is not really what we're looking for here, necessarily, but what does fire produce? Heat. Heat. And light. We have a panoramic. And there's another big thing going on there as well. So if you were sitting there watching this from, say, 50 feet away, you might have noticed a bit of noise, explosions, sound. So on top of getting water out of this chemical reaction, you're also going to get heat and light and sound as well. And all of these are different forms of the same thing, namely energy. That's what we haven't yet focused in on in chemical reactions. Energy is always involved here as well. <laughs> energy can take many forms. You see three of them right there, heat, light, and sound. And in fact, light and sound are kind of rare in chemical reactions. Some certainly produce light and sound, like explosions, fireworks, that kind of thing. The major form of energy we see in chemical reactions, though, is heat. So we're going to focus in on heat for right now. That's the big one. So this chemical reaction produces energy, most of it in the form of heat. Heat is a product here. But how do we balance it? What coefficient do we put in front of the energy right there? Ugh. 
So although energy is a product of this reaction, we can't just write it as a usual product because we can't balance it the way we could a normal product. So in chemical reactions, rather than actually showing energy as a product here, we just at the end of the equation label a variable. Guess what capital H means? Heat. Energy. Heat. H usually stands for heat, yes. All right, heat. But we can't just label the heat here because there was already some heat present. Consider our reactants here. Our reactants were hydrogen and oxygen. Presumably they weren't at absolute zero because that's impossible. They had some initial temperature here, which means our reactants had an initial amount of heat. When they formed together to make a product here, this product had extra heat. So rather than just labeling how much heat this reaction produces, it's going to be delta H, change in heat. So we had a certain base level of heat here. That heat has increased going to the products. So we're going to be registering here delta H, change in heat. How much of a change in heat was there? I think we need some math here, right? Yay, math. Let's see how we could actually calculate the delta H for a reaction like this. 